millennials expect technology to be integrated into their lives. They want the technology to begin integrated into their homes. But as an architect, I know we have a problem um, in the near future, and that is the way we build right now cannot accommodate the integration of this technology. The house of the future is going to have a lot of batteries. I know this. <laughs> so back to the millennials. Um, they're going to expect smart homes. But we know there's going to be a problem because the way houses are built, it's a horribly inefficient process. It involves um, much waste. It involves a lot of coordination. And if you look at this slide, you'll see that a typical home is really, usually it's built from the outside in, in that the house is framed, it's sheathed, and then the teams and teams of tradespeople come in and they install the plumbing and the mechanical and the electrical. And it, it's not so efficient. Uh, generates a lot of waste. But by contrast, let's look and see how a car is manufactured. Because really, when you look at a car that's coming off the assembly line, that car is a snapshot of the technology of the day, is it not? The Tesla, you know, the latest hot car, the all-battery, battery-powered electric car. I mean, it's, it's got everything from high performance to a comfortable interior environment. Airplanes, they've been autonomous for many years now. Ships, they've been built you know, pre, with prefabricated processes also for years. If you look at the interior of all of these, these, these buildings, right, there's integrated technology everywhere, technology that makes, it's, makes the, uh, the car or the ship user-friendly. Um, there's gesture control, there's voice control. It's got, it's got a lot of the new technologies. And that all comes about because we're building these things in a, in a high-performance environment, not on a construction site like a house. So what if components of our houses are built like appliances? What if a kitchen or a bathroom can be fully built in a factory like a refrigerator? At Virginia Tech, we have a research project called Future House where we're proposing that in order to accommodate smart technologies, we have to rethink how we build. So we've come up with a suite of cartridges or house components, such as kitchens, bathrooms, storage walls, um, bedrooms that can convert to home offices, um, laundry rooms, mechanical rooms. The whole suite is prefabricated, packaged up, and delivered to the site, and then the house is built around it. So, the, you know, how do we do this? We start with a structural frame, a SIPS panel, a structural insulated wall panel. This panel is cut with CNC processes, so it's absolutely perfect. It's precise, it's square, and it's a perfect environment for installing all these cabinets that, that require perfection and precision. The result is this. It's a smart kitchen that is ready to be packaged up and delivered to the site. This would be, I, I like to say that, you know, one day maybe we'll go to Best Buy and instead of just buying the, the appliance, we'll actually buy the whole kitchen. So we love this idea and we really thought it would work, but we wanted to try it out. So on a little side project, myself and two of my students that were on this team recently graduated, so they have a little bit of money, we decided to go in and, and get a construction loan and build a house. This house is a, a two-level structure. We built it with our own hands, and it takes 12 cartridge components that are stacked on a site. This is one example, it's the kitchen. We rented a warehouse for 30 days, and in that warehouse we installed all of the systems, from the electrical, to the plumbing, to the tile work, even the lighting and the cabinets. In one day, we rented a crane, and we stacked those 12 objects right onto the job site, almost like a Lego set. We're gonna get Lego to sponsor us, I think. I'm serious. <laughs> um, 
Even the roof was a set of prefabricated components, so we took full advantage of having that crane. In eight hours, we were pretty much closed in. In three days, we were completely weatherproof. We spent about a month, a couple months after that, finishing everything up, things that weren't done off-site, and this is the resulting house. And, and it, it, even though it looks like a normal house, it's far from a normal house. It's actually a beautiful house. And it just recently, we just, found, just went to Richmond and we won a, a National AIA Design Award for it. So we're pretty happy with that experiment. But here's the spark. If we can do that, it's just a regular house, which by the way, we sold a month ahead of time and we sold within the budget. Um, what can we do if we use this process to make the smart home? So years ago, uh, Corning Glass came out with this video um, called A Day Made of Glass. And it was really a visionary video that, that, that looked to the future and proposed what the future, future house would be. At the time, we were working on the Lumen House and um, we were working on the smart home. They were in, envisioning what, what it would be. But now there are partners. We reached out to them, and together we're working on all of these smart components that uses the Gorilla Glass as the interior. This is our first prototype. It was the kitchen, and it's the Internet of Things kitchen. Um, it has integrated screens for interfaces, for Skyping. Um, I love the kitchen. The backsplash is a touchscreen display where you can, you can Skype in grandma and have her show you how to make that apple pie. The house is full of easy-to-use interfaces with voice control and gesture control. Uh, doors are actuated. There's cameras in the oven, you know, watching your cookies bake. Because it was a student that gave me an idea, you know, we can't have burned cookies. <laughs> or not even burned, they just have to be cooked perfectly. We have sensors in the refrigerator. And this is before Samsung came out with theirs, which I don't think it works. But we have sensors. <laughs> We have sensors in our refrigerator, so you can, you can log into your refrigerator and your pantry from the grocery store and see, check on, on, on how you're doing with milk and how old that milk is. We even are taking the opportunity, since we have a whole kitchen, to integrate technology like in the kitchen within systems. So we have a countertop that integrates the induction cooktop under it. So when you're not cooking, you have more space to work. The beauty of it is that I like to say when we're finished, we package it up and gift wrap. It's gift wrapped, right? Because this can go to the site, be installed, the house is built around it, and you have a smart home. The bathroom was the next prototype. This, maybe you saw this in the research magazine, but um, this is, uh, starts with a smart mirror, a smart mirror that gives you uh, the information of what's happening in your bathroom. The bathroom has an ability to detect who it is using the bathroom, so it presets your custom displays. It can preset the height of your vanity. Uh, it can um, set, preset your music or your, your lighting. Um, we're using this as an opportunity to uh, incorporate um, some on, on the market technologies that Kohler provides, like this, uh, this toilet seat automatic clo automatically closes when you leave. They call it the marriage saver. <laughs> but even, even uh, better is we have, a, we have a way to activate the Amazon Dash button. So now when you're running out of toilet paper, you get an automatic reorder without even thinking about it. Free delivery in two days. <clears throat> but my favorite part of the bathroom and the kitchen now is that with this adjustable vanity and the ability to move the lower drawer, we can accommodate I mean, a wheelchair with the sensor that's in the floor that gives you your weight up on the mirror, just like Pablo's uh, research. We can identify when someone has fallen on the bathroom floor and a text message can be sent to a caregiver. We're looking at how to easily operate appliances, things that can be dangerous, like working, you know, like opening an oven door or refrigerator door. Um, so this, this project is really branching out and it's, 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 it's crossing the university in so many different areas. That bathroom can be packaged up and gift wrapped again. 
the living room is two cartridges, which is uh, a, an experiment for the censored home. And we're looking at the psychology of comfort of light, and we're pre, pre-operating or pre-controlling the lights based on what tasks are happening in the space, whether you're vacuuming and you need lots of light, reading a book and you need warm light, or watching a movie and you need dramatic light. Um, we're even taking, taking the opportunity to look at materials of building. Uh, my goal in life is to eliminate drywall from the construction process. <laughs> People say, oh, but it's so easy to repair. Well, it's so easy to damage, <laughs> right? We're looking at beautiful prefabricated panelized systems. You know, you don't see drywall in your car, right? It's panelized systems, factory fabricated systems. We even have a facial recognition uh, system on the door that it, uh, recognizes you when you arrive and it'll open the door for you. Currently, as we speak, we're working on the bedroom and home office of the future that will complete the suite of components that we'll eventually build on campus or install on campus. This project is a concept, it's an investigation of the concept of flex space where a moving cartridge that's a storage wall or a closet can move 12 feet back and forth between two spaces and accommodate more space from one room to the other depending on which room you're using. It introduces a laundry room or it introduces a, a walk-in closet. To demonstrate that, we built this, this, uh, this wall. It was in uh, Las Vegas at the Greenbuild Conference just last month. And this demonstrates that idea. It's a moving wall. Here you have a living room and a, a, a home office. That wall can move back and forth. If you need a bed, a Murphy bed can fold from the wall. Now you have an extra bedroom. The idea is, if you have an ability to expand your office, you don't have to commute every day back and forth to work. We are also looking at how we share technology. So you've got that 75-inch TV screen. Well, that screen can toggle back and forth between the office or the living room, depending on where you want that monitor. And the back side is a, a high-definition printed photograph, just a beautiful piece of art. All of these cartridges are here on campus. We're still, we use this as a research laboratory. Eventually, we will gift wrap them all, ship them to our site, and we're gonna build this. Out at the research center, we're gonna build a building that explores all aspects of building of the future. My favorite potential for this idea is um, we just got a call from an architecture firm up in New York that saw this idea and they wanted to partner with us to make disaster relief housing for Ecuador, for the earthquake in Ecuador. So we've designed a bathroom and kitchen cartridge that we're gonna set up a facility for them in Ecuador so they build it. They hire their own people, they build their cartridges and you can simply take that one cartridge to a job site and then build the house around it. But we have a, a wide area of focus with this. It's not just housing. We're looking at hospitals, and we're looking at um, aging in place or senior care facilities, because there's so much opportunity when you, when you have a chance to integrate technology into these structures. We also are branching out across the university, um, computer science, mechanical engineering, um, business, psychology, gerontology. Um, one that I want to really point out here is uh, our partnership with the Macromolecular Institute. Um, that's with uh, Tim Long and Chris Williams. We're looking at new materials for smart exterior wall systems, phase change and vapor barriers. Um, we call this relationship between us and them and DuPont from molecules to modules. I thought that was a catchy title. Like, we just mentioned we're going to be in Dubai in 2018, and we're looking at, for the opportunity to take all of these ideas, all of this research, and apply it to a net zero energy home and show the world what we're doing here at Virginia Tech. Thank you. <laughs>